right, everyone, welcome to World Cup Qualifying Preview. I'm coming to you from San Jose, Costa Rica. Massive park in the middle of the city, and I thought, why not do the preview show right in front of Estadio Nacional, Costa Rica, where Canada is going to face Costa Rica on Thursday, March 24th, where Canada can qualify for the World Cup. But we're going to go through all confederations today. We're going to start with CONCACAF. We have got five teams that are still eligible to claim a berth at the World Cup. Now, Canada and Mexico are virtually there. I think it's just a matter of playing out the games. Canada will have a berth. Mexico has the easiest schedule in the group and will qualify as well. It's going to be a real battle for third and final automatic spot. USA has an extremely difficult schedule. They are in Mexico home to Panama, and then in Costa Rica. They've never won in Mexico or in Costa Rica. But it's that home game against Panama where everything is on the line because all they need to do is beat Panama at home and they will join Canada and Mexico for that third and final automatic qualification spot. Costa Rica and Panama will fight it out for number three. I just think that Costa Rica is on the downward spiral. They're a little bit older and their best time is behind them. I think they need to um, take a look at their future, get some new young blood in there and kind of start over a little bit. But they've got the best keeper in the world. Well, one that Kaylor Navas, who is absolutely amazing. I think Panama's well coached. I think Panama's the better team. I think they've played better. I think they've been unlucky in the last couple results. Things haven't gone their way. Uh, they are in Honduras, they'll grab three, sorry, home to Honduras, they will grab three points there. They're big matches in the United States, if they could even hold the U.S. to a draw, but a win really is necessary to get Panama that third automatic spot of CONCACAF. I think Panama is going to the fourth place match, where they will face, most likely, New Zealand of Oceania. That will happen in June in Qatar and it'll be a one-game playoff between Panama and New Zealand for a spot in the World Cup in Qatar. Let's switch over to Asia. Asia, it's pretty straightforward as Korea and Iran have already qualified on their side of the groups. We've got Japan and Saudi Arabia, which are ahead of Australia. I think that Japan and Saudi Arabia will claim their spots here shortly. I don't think Australia has enough offense. They're really just not a good enough team. They will have to go the backdoor route. They will finish third place where they will face the United Arab Emirates. I think that's going to be a tightly contested affair. I actually, I'm going to go with UAE that will go on to play the South American fifth place team. That is my guess. And unfortunately, Australia will miss out in their for their first World Cup since 2002. All right, let's go over to South America. Wow, this is, there was a lot to play for in some massive matchups, including Peru playing Uruguay and Uruguay playing Chile. Colombia hasn't scored in so long. I don't know if they remember how to score a goal. They were comfortably in an automatic berth and now they are outside of that, not even going to the playoffs. I really don't know what to expect from Colombia in their last few games. I mean, as far as schedules goes, theirs looks pretty decent, but they need to score a goal and they just haven't seemed to have been able to do that. I think Uruguay will finish in the automatic top four. I think Ecuador, it's pretty much done for them. They will also qualify in the top four. Of course, we know Brazil and Argentina are already there. So who's gonna finish fifth? Well, you know what, if Chile plays like they can, which they've shown, but they are older. They are on the, the back end of a golden generation. You know, if they could squeak into that fifth spot, I think they would beat the United Arab Emirates and go through to Qatar. Uh, but I just don't think they have it. I, I think fifth place is going to go to Peru. Their fans, their team, their players, they were teased in Russia 
and weren't able to accomplish what they wanted to, they need to get back to that World Cup. Just the one spot they had in Russia, and then it's been a long time before that since they have qualified. I think Peru gets to that fifth place finish. I think they'll have no problem with the United Arab Emirates, and Peru will join Uruguay, Ecuador, Brazil, and Argentina in Qatar for the World Cup. Now, our most difficult road to qualify I truly believe it's Africa. I mean, you win a tough group, finish first out of four teams, and you've still got to play through a home and away against a very strong opponent to get to Qatar 2022. And we've got, of course, Tunisia gets the easiest draw of them all with Mali, but I actually think Mali's going to press this team. I think Mali could surprise here. They did meet in the African Cup of Nations, and it was it was quite a strange match, actually, <laughs> which if you look back in at the African Cup of Nations where the referee had blown the whistle early, just a real funny scenario down at, at the African Cup of Nations. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to go with Mali. I think Molly's going to earn their place. They've been close. They've been teasing their fans for a number of years. I think Molly's going to upset Tunisia. That's going to be the only upset in Africa. I think that Nigeria will take care of Ghana. Unfortunately, Ghana is on once again on the back end of, uh, of uh, a golden generation, if you will. But they've got some strong talent coming. I think they're rebuilding. I think Ghana will be back for 2026. The massive tilt is Egypt and Senegal. I feel bad for Egypt because they are a pretty good team. They finally got back to the World Cup after a lot of years of absence. They were last in 1990 and then Mo Salah got them to 2018. Unfortunately, I think they're run into the best team in Africa right now, which is Senegal. Those are some big, fast, athletic boys. I think Senegal is the best team in Africa, and I think Senegal is going to take care of Egypt. And they could just jump up into pot two in the rankings, and they could do some damage in Qatar. I'm thinking if Senegal gets a decent little group, I think they'll go to the round of 16, and possibly, depending on that opponent they play in the round of 16, they could be looking at a, at a quarterfinal appearance. Senegal is, is a great team. Morocco just does not allow anyone to score. I think they're going to do that quite well again in their matchup against Congo. I think they've got a great draw against Congo. Congo DR will, will not create a problem uh, for Morocco. The Moroccans will be back. They've got unfinished business at the World Cup. They had an unfortunate own goal in the dying moments against Iran. They played well against Portugal. Probably outplayed Portugal, but could not hit the net with a shot. And Portugal's Cristiano Ronaldo scored the one goal that was necessary to get three points against them. And then Morocco played a fantastic game against Spain, drawing them in their last group, which you know, left the fans wanting a lot more. So Morocco gets back to Qatar. Last but not least in Africa, we've got perennial finalists, Cameroon, who have been to so many World Cups. They seem to be a stalwart there, but they're coming up against Algeria, one of the best teams in Africa right now. And unfortunately uh, for the Adominable Lions, they will not make it to Qatar. It'll be Algeria. They are too strong. They are a good side. And the Middle East will absolutely erupt when the Algerians qualify for Qatar 2022. There will be massive amounts of fans traveling to Qatar to support the Algerians. Let's go over to Europe. Now, Ukraine, Scotland, which are two of my heritage teams, family came from Ukraine. I've got Scottish roots, so it's pretty neat that that those two will play each other. But that's been postponed till June, so we've got Wales versus Austria. Two decent sides. I think Austria had a tough qualification campaign. Uh, Wales came runners-up in their group. And the two are going to play each other a one-match playoff. And I know a lot of people are picking Wales. I... They could very well win this one, but I'm going to go with Austria. I think Austria is going to go through to the playoff round. Ukraine and Scotland are going to play off in June. 
and Ukraine's going to win that match. And then Ukraine is going to win one for the fans. They're going to beat Austria, and they will go into the World Cup, their first World Cup appearance since 2006. With everything going on in the world today, I think Ukraine will do it for their fans. Uh, you look at... Uh, Path B, you've got Poland, who has advanced because of the walkover. Russia has been removed from World Cup qualifying. And then you've got Sweden, Czech Republic. Czech Republic has shown some great skill and some great play, especially at the Euros. But I think Sweden's too good. I think Sweden, they've got some young talent. I think Sweden's got this one. They're going to take care of the Czech Republic. And then you're going to have Robert Lewandowski, once again, doesn't show his best for his country, but he, he definitely is the great, the best, one of the best players in the world for sure. But he just doesn't seem to do it with his Polish jersey on. Sweden takes Poland, and Sweden will qualify for the World Cup this week. Path C. It, it saddens me that Italy and Portugal cannot both go. But if Italy would have just taken care of their group, why are they tying these games 0-0? Nil-nil. You know, Switzerland, they, Italy shouldn't even be playing in this path. Neither should Portugal, because if you go back to Portugal's first game against Serbia, that ball crossed the line, we all know it did. Portugal should have won that game, and they would easily be in the World Cup. Now they've got this backdoor playoff, which are going to play a feisty turkey side, and I just think that Turkey could upset the Portuguese on that day in a one-game playoff. If you ask most people in the world, do they want Italy, do they want Portugal at the World Cup? Well, I'm going to tell you, they want Cristiano Ronaldo at the World Cup. Everyone, except for the Italians, want Cristiano Ronaldo in Qatar. The Middle Easterners hosting this World Cup, <laughs> they want CR7 there. So everyone's going to be rooting for Portugal. But unfortunately... I think Turkey's going to stun them. I think Turkey, uh, they were awful at the Euros, but they showed some real grit and talent winning in Netherlands, finishing ahead of Erling Holland and Norway. So the upset is in the making, but we've got Italy, Northern Macedonia. Northern Macedonia, some people are thinking they're going to beat Italy. I just don't think that's going to happen. Italy's going to going to knock out North Macedonia and then it's going to be Italy, Turkey and Italy is going to take care of business. Italy will qualify for World Cup Qatar. It is unreal that they didn't qualify in 2018. I can't even imagine the Azuri not qualifying two World Cups in a row. Not even, that's not even thinkable. But they're going to qualify for Qatar and that is our 14 teams that will qualify in the next 7-8 days. We've got the draw in Doha on April 1st. There will be three teams that we will not know that will play off in June. Those three teams that will be added later June will be Ukraine, Peru, and Panama. And they will fall into the slots in the draw that will happen on April 1st. My name is Lee Cormish. You heard it here. Canada is going to qualify in that stadium in just a few days' time. I look forward to joining 300 fans against 35,000 Ticos. 1% of the crowd will be Canadian, but we are just too good. John Herdman is a magical miracle worker. The boys are on a mission. I just, I, I'm still in disbelief that we can qualify for a World Cup on an away match in Costa Rica's National Stadium. That is crazy. Over and out, Lee Cormer's coming to you from San Jose, Costa Rica. Enjoy the next 10 days, which is a massive ton of World Cup qualifying matches and the draw from Doha, which is one of the most exciting days. It's like Christmas morning for me. Take care. We'll talk to you again soon.